I think, you know, as people come on, they'll just come on, but just in the interest of time, because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. I guess we're going to start. Is that okay, Liz? All right. All right. Hi, parents. Hi, everybody. This is the last um, PA meeting of the uh, 19 slash 20 school year. And what a strange school year it has been. Uh, so thank you for making some time tonight. Um, I just, I'll introduce myself. I'm Evie Rabeck and I'm the parent of Sydney. He is in 10th grade for one more month. And I am currently the PA president. Um, and we also have our treasurer and our secretary here. So I will let them introduce themselves. Oh, you're on mute, Owen. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Owen Evans. Hello, everyone. I'm the treasurer. Um, I've been for some time now. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. And we. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Fanny. I'm the treasurer. And I am a parent to a rising senior. Wow. Okay. Um, and there is a fourth member of the executive board. I don't see him on here, which is understandable, but uh, his name is Andy, and he uh, is the vice president this year. He has been president in the past, and he is the parent of River, who is a graduating senior. So um, even though I don't see him here, we wanted to sort of thank Andy for his years of service to the PA, and on the SLT and uh, being an instrumental presence in the school and to wish him uh, much congratulations as his son goes off to, I know, clap hands, as his son goes off to college, which is like, um, you know, I know we'll all get there soon enough, but it's, it's pretty overwhelming. So we'll, we'll all say a thank you to Andy here and then we'll, we'll, we'll send him some emails and reach out to him. Uh, personally. Um, I also want to say if there are any um, incoming freshman families who are on here, because I don't know everybody's name, we want to give you a big welcome. Uh, it's really exciting to have you. And um, when we return again in September, you will be full, fully fledged voting members of the PA. But uh, we're super excited to, to welcome you and have you. I also kind of wanted to um, very briefly sort of acknowledge on behalf of the PA that, you know, this has been an interesting and strange and hard week or so for everybody uh, for lots of reasons. And, you know, we're not really going to talk in this meeting about like what's going on outside these boxes because this is time for us to talk about the school and the kids and the school environment. But we kind of have to name that since everything is political, there's stuff on our minds right now that and there's stuff on our kids minds and um uh i was actually on behalf of the pa in touch with liz earlier this week and upcoming we don't have an exact wednesday but hopefully on an upcoming wednesday night uh we'll have an opportunity for maker academy teachers and staff team who are facilitating opportunities for students to engage in the work of discussing racism and ways to dismantle it to be uh, doing something for parents as well so that parents can get involved in that. Liz, I see you shaking your head yes, right? We're gonna put something like that together. Okay, all right, I wanted to put that out there. So um, we will start by, um, Fanny has the minutes from last month's meeting. And we are actually, due to a special dispensation from the chancellor, able to vote on things like that on Zoom. Normally, we're not allowed to have Zoom PA meetings, and we're not allowed to vote on Zoom. But because of what's going on, um, all PAs can currently conduct votes like this on Zoom. So we will be able to uh, vote in last month's minutes after Fanny provides them. Thank you. OK, so um, the minutes from May 7, 20. Um, the executive, everybody in the executive board was present and um, Evie discussed the trans chancellor's exemption and the change which was temporarily to have meetings over a virtual platform like Zoom so we can meet. We can only vote for certain things like, like to, to approve the meetings. 
Um, one of the things that, that was mentioned by Evie were elections have been put on hold and we are awaiting word from Chancellor. July 1st is the new fiscal year, so we're still waiting. So on the agenda uh, was the SLT report, the principal report, and the treasury report. Then we had um, a final sharing from, from Evie and then um, we had Q&A. So with the SLT, they had met prior to the meeting, they discussed final grades, the goals of the year, which were college readiness and grades. And Luke reported, the principal report, that um, last month there, was, there were 193 accepted students and that was a huge number of increase and with that, Staff also need, needed to expand, and um, Luke introduced Chad as the new assistant principal, so he's the second assistant principal to join uh, UA Maker. The scholarship fundraiser, uh, there was $20,000 that was raised over three weeks, and that went for scholarship for seniors. Um, Luke also mentioned that there was 100% acceptance of, to colleges from all the seniors, and at that point, 88 of them had made decisions. And um, he reinforced how important it was to check in with your kids, to have them log in. The assignments were Friday, advisory meets each day, and attendance was very, very important. And if the, if the students can't check in, it's really important that they contact their advisors. And he, um, he discussed final grades and final grades, if the students have a failing grade, it's considered an incomplete and they have until the summer or fall to complete the work. And the students need to complete work. Um, that was about all the, 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 I guess the principal report, there were, there were a few questions regarding waitlisted students and whether students on a waitlist can still get in and he, he mentioned yes. And the attendance and just, keep contact with every student. I think at that point, every single student, there was a, maybe one student that the school had not been in contact with, but they had made contact with everybody. Um, Chad mentioned the AP exams that were supposed to start, well, this was last month, so they were supposed to start the following week, and that was done through College Board. Then the Treasury report, um, Owen, reported that donation for families, we had set up a Venmo account and we had had about $529 to give to families through UA Maker due to the COVID-19. And finally, Evie shared her screen, which was a list of resources that was for, um, during the times, mental support, links to New York City employment, housing, rent, and, um, and other things like that. So um, that was about it. So um, here's how I believe votes are working on Zoom. Uh, we use the chat function, and that's because um, not everybody is using their video, which is fine. It is not mandatory to use your video, although we, we like to see you. So if every video was on, we could count hands. But what we're going to do is uh, use the chat function. So I will say all in favor of um, admitting those minutes into the record say aye, and then in chat you would type yes, and then I'll give an opportunity for people who are voting no and for people who are abstaining. So uh, those in favor of admitting those minutes into the record. I don't expect this to be a controversial vote, but we are supposed to do it correctly. I'm seeing a lot of yeses, okay. Um, and it, thumbs up, uh, anybody say no? And anybody abstaining? All right, that was a very exciting Zoom vote. Thank you, everybody. Um, I will have more, uh, we'll have some PA business to do after sort of the administration reports and special speakers, um, but I will save that for the end because I know that for, for uh, principal and assistant principal report and then for Ashley as well, there's a lot of really important stuff to cover. So I'm gonna turn it over to assistant principal Liz Dowdell. Thanks, Evie, and thank you everyone for being here. A um, few updates on our end, um, kind of building off of some of the things Fanny shared from last week. Um, last week, we didn't do our weekly parent night because we were doing our accepted students night instead, um, which Venus and Chad and a lot of our team helped run. And we actually, since our 
new cohort of students is so large. We actually did three events instead of just one um, and had really great turnout. Um, it's not quite the same as meeting our new students in person, but like really fun to see them virtually and get to start to get to know them. Um, another update just around the final grade policy. Um, your children might have mentioned this to you because we talked about it a bit in our assembly yesterday. Um, but in addition to there being course extensions as an opportunity for students, um, Maker is doing kind of a unique policy where considering the fact that most of the school year was in person um, and we actually had a marking period end right before um, when we were still in school. Um, so what we're doing that if your child was passing their classes at the end of the fourth marking period, which ended in mid-March, um, even if their grade has decreased at this point, um, we're still going to make sure that they earn their credits for those courses this year. Um, we just think it is fair for students that if they were doing well for the two thirds of the year when they were in person with us when we could support them, that they deserve to earn those credits um, and not to be penalized for the fact that this whole situation has been hard on everyone, especially teenagers. Um, Another thing that we're gonna be doing is um, students have the opportunity to, um, when they do earn their credits, to not have it just be a numerical grade, um, to have it be just a credit, so that way it doesn't impact their GPA. Um, if you have a strong preference one way or the other, please email me. Um, but what we were planning on doing is comparing it to your child's current GPA. Um, and if their grade in a particular class would help them maintain or improve their GPA will go ahead and put the number in on their transcript. Um, but if they're, if your child's usually an 85 average student, and right now they're getting like 65, 70s, we'll go ahead and put in just as a credit so that, that way their GPA doesn't lower because of all of this. Um, I feel like that's a lot of information. It's a lot of new stuff for our kids. So what we're doing is we're actually making this week our last week that we put out new curriculum and new content for them to do. I mean, we're going to focus the rest of the month of June on giving them opportunities to revise their work, do some extra credit. Um, and teachers, if your child has a borderline grade, you'll probably be starting to hear more outreach from their teachers because we really want to make sure we focus these last few weeks on supporting our students. Um, if they don't make it through and they still have a 55 at the end of the school year, they will earn a course credit which means that they would get through the summer as well as the fall semester to complete their coursework. Um, but our personal goal is to try to support as many of our kids to earn their credits now during the month of June, um, rather than like waiting till the summer, which is very up in the air, trying to support them as best we can right now. Um, Oh, just one other thing. Um, we sent an email out earlier this week about Regents waivers. Um, if your child is in a course that finishes in a Regents exam normally, the exams have been canceled. Um, so as long as your child passes their classes, they'll earn waivers. Um, so if your child's in, say, living environment and geometry and global history, um, they could earn a waiver on all of those exams. Um, and what that means is they don't have to worry about passing those exams to graduate. Um, it'll go on their transcript um, and they can take it again in the future if they want to like see how they did, but they don't ever have to sit for those exams. There is an option as parents, if you want to, that you can decline those waivers. Um, if you'd like your child to sit for those exams in the future, um, all you have to do is email us. Um, I, personally would strongly recommend to just accept the waivers. Um, if your child at some point wants to take the exams and they do well, their exam score would just replace the waiver. Um, and if they take the exam and they don't do well, the waiver would still hold and they would still meet their graduation requirements. So it's a win-win, one of those few things. I'm not usually super excited when I hear stuff from the New York State education policy world, but um, this was one that was definitely very much in favor of our students. Um, and eliminating one of those extra things that can be a bit of a barrier sometimes for them. Any questions about all of that? Sorry, I feel like that was a lot of information. Um, yes, how do we register for, for, to make sure that our kids take that exam? Um, you can just, you mean like register to take the actual exam or register to get a waiver? 
Well, it sounds like you're encouraging us to do both because we have nothing to lose. So um, what, what's our starting point for that? Um, yeah, so if you're okay with your child having a waiver, um, you actually don't really have to do anything. We're automatically gonna put those in for any course that your child is in now or anything that they took last year and might have failed. So if you have a student who's like an 11th grader and didn't pass a Regents exam last year, we're gonna put in that waiver as well. Um, and then we're assuming that the next time Regents will be offered will probably be next January. Um, so as we get closer to that date, that would be when we would, we'll send out some information about how you and your child go about registering for exams if they want to sit for them. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, I don't know, if, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. I, Christopher Stanley here. My daughter, Layla Stanley, is a junior at, at UA Maker. I'm sorry, I, you can't see me. I, I've tried to turn my video on, it won't work. Um, my question is this, can, do the Regents exam waivers count for the advanced Regents diploma? Yes, they do. Excellent. And is the LOT exams required for the advanced Regents? Um, not for MAKER. Instead, students can take the CTE exam. Great, great. Yeah, we've got the Adobe exam coming up Friday. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. The biggest thing that the, the only reason why you, your, your child should take a Regent that's being given a waiver is if they need it for the college readiness, which is um, a 70 on the algebra Regents or 75 on the English Regent, which that basically like takes them out of remediation for college. That would be the only reason to retake a test, I believe. But the waiver only gives them the pat, like they will pass, they, they don't have to take the exam, but it will like count towards graduation. But to get the college ready scores, that would then require that they take it at the next time that it's offered. And there would definitely be like, we usually do prep around it and we usually prepare the kids for it if they need it. The waivers also um, can apply to the CT exams as well. Um, although those are one that I would, we still can offer those remotely um, because they were online exams to begin with. Um, and that those are the exams that also count as an industry credential that students could bring to a future job or internship. Um, so they can still get the waiver in terms of getting the advanced regents diploma, but I'd encourage them to still, if they're in Jerry's Photoshop class, I'd encourage them to still try that exam this spring. I have questions. Would you mind, um, I know that there was a long email that went out today. Would you mind going a little bit more in depth into what the rest of the academic year looks like um, and what attendance will look like and whether or not there's still gonna be live advisory or any synchronous uh, Zoom classes at all? Oh, yeah, great question. Um, so we're continuing our regular schedule this week um, with the exception of tomorrow is a chancellor's PD day. Um, so students are still expected to engage in remote learning, um, but they're continuing just on the work that has been posted for this week because um, teachers will be in meetings all day. Um, and Kelly, they've been, Kelly has been sending an email to all of your students every morning that they just like click, yes, I'm here. Um, and their attendance can just be taken that way. Um, and then we're gonna continue the same schedule through next week um, with advisory and all of that. Um, the last two weeks of June, we're working on putting together, Ashley actually is spearheading this, uh, a bunch of fun activities, because we realize as grades start to wind down and students are like meeting their credit requirements, we still want to engage students for the rest of the month, but doing packets of work for math and history and science might not be what kids really want to do at the end of June. Um, so Ashley's been trying to put together along with a bunch of our teachers and partners, just a bunch of fun, creative activities for kids to engage in. Um, more details, Ashley, when do you think we'll have that schedule? I'm hoping to have a draft of the schedule out by Friday. And then we'll continue to take attendance um, by your students filling out that survey each morning. Um, or if they have any interaction with us, 
um, that can count. So like if your child emails their advisor or logs in and submits something on Google Classroom, all of those things can count as their attendance. And I see, uh, thank you, Chad. Chad is in the chat answering questions about when people are supposed to take the ELA Regents. Yeah, if, if I may just clarify, those were my questions. My, it, it boils down to, I have a ninth grader um, who I think if we wanted to, he could bank four Regents from the waiver rather than wait and take an ELA exam later, I would personally prefer that he get the waiver for the ELA exam at now. Is that possible? Or does he, does, is he gonna have to take it in 10th grade instead? Um, good question. I'll have to look into that to make sure I have an exact answer. The tricky part there is usually the year that culminates in a Regents exam for English is 11th grade. Um, we do sometimes have students take the exam early though, as early as ninth grade. So I'll have to look into if there's any loophole we might be able to use there. Um, okay. If you have a ninth grader, the, the automatic waiver that they'll get is for their math class, is the main one that, they're, that normally ends in a Regents exam, whether they're in algebra or geometry. Um, so if they're also taking like the physics, would they get that one? Our physics class is actually different from the okay. physics course. Um, so it'd just be the math and global, is it global history? Global no. history is a two year sequence, so they have to complete the two years before they can get the waiver. All right, so I'll follow up with you separately on the ELA thing. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll look into there. There might be something we can do with ELA. Fanny has a question. It's in the chat about uh, in the past, high school students had like Regents Week, so they ended school earlier than the rest of the DOE. Is that still the case? Um, because there's no Regents exams, um, we're expected to continue instruction in some form or at least some sort of engagement for students through the end of June. So the last day will be June 26th. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the last week that we're going to assign new work. Um, and then after this week, we're going to try to have more just fun activities to engage with. So different kind of school, but yes, this year for high school goes right to the end. Okay. So there, there's no school, I mean, there is school tomorrow, but it's not live and because um, it's a PD day. And there was, is there school on Tuesday or is that just K through eight that was closed on Tuesday, but now isn't? High school has school next Tuesday. Okay, okay, great. great. Um, and I also had a question. We had received an email from Ivy with something called the COVID Chronicles survey. Was that something that we were supposed to give, make sure our kids did, or were we, the parents, supposed to fill those out as well? Does anybody on this call know? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to stump anyone. Oh, no, that's fine. I just I, to no. <laughs> oh, yes, actually, so... Um, Yesterday, Ivy and Mr. Roberts and several of our teachers um, put together this great conversation with our students um, during our weekly assembly. Um, Drew also popped in, um, and I already had one teacher today ask me, who was, the, who was the gentleman who I didn't recognize who shared such wonderful things? Um, so it definitely had an impact. Um, and one of the things that um, Ivy put together was just a survey because some students were comfortable sharing their thoughts, you know, publicly in the whole group, but we also wanted to have a way to capture for both students and parents, you're welcome to fill it out as a parent as well, of what, what you want to do with this conversation if you want to be involved um, talking about race and equity, um, which are conversations we had started at Maker, but has become way more urgent and pressing and definitely on all of our minds right now. Um, so we're we have a great team that's trying to put together some activities to, we don't have the answers, um, but to empower our students, um, empower our families, and help improve Maker in general. Um, so that's something that your child might have already filled out yesterday, but if not, please encourage them to fill it out again. Um, and parents, we would love to have your responses as well. Great. Any other questions 
for the assistant principals. Hi, uh, this is Kathleen Wright. When, if you, the seniors, when is the official graduation? You know, when will they, <laughs> when will this take place? We're currently planning um, the graduation date from the original. We're gonna have a virtual one. Uh -huh. The hope is to figure out what happens beyond that so that we can eventually do it on person, in person. Mm -hmm. I believe, and I'm just thinking, I looked in the calendar and I couldn't find it, but I thought it was the 24th. Okay. And we're figuring out a time and we're figuring out how to make the virtual way of doing it in a way more intimate, more, more in a way that it like everyone gets a moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's currently what we as a team are formulating and we're talking with, oh, it's June 25th. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So is that the end of school for the seniors then, June 25th when they graduate? Technically, they're supposed to go until the 26th, um, but in, in the past, um, we had Regents Week. So I don't actually know what guidance we've been given mm -hmm. around uh, their last day, because graduation means they're technically no longer a part of the school. But mm -hmm. on the 26th, traditionally, it's where students come and get their, um, they come and get their report cards, their transcripts, their diplomas. Um, I don't know what's gonna what we actually have planned. So, will there be a time that they can go? I mean, because this happened suddenly. I mean, the seniors will they be able to go over the summer to clean out their lockers, get their yearbooks? I mean, is there a plan put in place for that? Not yet, but we're hoping to do something. Um, uh -huh. We're hoping to be able to like squeeze something in before the end of the school year. Um, uh -huh. We haven't gotten official guidance on that, so it might have to be some kind of like, might have to be relatively low key. Um, right. Did the yearbooks come in, by the way? Are they in? Not yet. Oh, not, okay. Not that I know of. Um, but yeah, that'll be part of it. We know that seniors want to, they want to pick up their diploma. They want to. <laughs> right, right. Get their yearbook, get their yearbook signed by some, you know. Somebody. <laughs> that, that. So we're trying to work out some ways that we can do that that kind of stuff safely. Um, Could they do it outside somewhere, like in the field or something? I don't know. That has definitely been brought up. Uh-huh. And we're just fielding all of the, we're fielding all of the possibilities and all of the logistics that would go around it and just uh -huh. figuring out like, what can we do? Right. How can we do it? Right now, our guidance has been informed, like what we've been guided to consider is doing a virtual one so that there is a, uh, a celebration of some mm -hmm. sort and then Ivy and the rest of the team and I am part of the team and I and Venus and Ashley are also there um, we are figuring out how to expand it so that uh -huh. it might be that we will have a homecoming which we've never done before but because we do want to celebrate and honor them mm -hmm. that's another thing that's been thrown on the table we've been thinking about like what are ways that we can make this we can honor the senior class in a way that they, that's different than other classes. And so right. Ivy and the rest of the team are figuring that out. Okay, great. And the other thing, like I said, a lot of the, a lot of the seniors have, their lockers still haven't been cleaned out. So they have a lot of things, personal items in school still. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> <into> that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I I can't imagine what the smelly gym sock lockers smell like from March till now that it's all sitting there. <laughs> they stopped stinking a long time ago. I, um, so. I, have a, I have a quick question. So besides graduation, I've been seeing different things that different schools are doing for the seniors. Have, have there been any thought put into that? Maybe the PA could do something or has anything been brought up about that? Have we could brainstorm that idea. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what do we have in mind? Uh, well, I mean, you can't do lawn signs in New York City, but, you know, right. something, stickers, I don't know. Come up with something. Grab sticker. bag. Like I graduated sticker. That's cute. Um, <laughs> we would need, uh, uh, we'd need to do some research. Drew, do you want to look around and see what you find? Sure, since I open my big mouth, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the only uh, issue is that technically we can't spend any 
PA money without putting it up for a vote, and this is the last one of the year. Um, well, we could. But uh, maybe we could figure something out. We could, yeah, we could maybe vote or to put some money aside for something. That okay. Could be we, 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 have, could, we could do that today. We could pick an amount that we're willing to, to spend and say, you know, we won't go over X budget and let's see if we can come up with Dad, something. Are you well, we, haven't our, hang on, we haven't spent our title one money for this year, so. Oh. You know what, Owen, oh, how much did we how much did we approve? Because everybody approved spending money for our big fundraiser, which was going to be parent teacher conference night, which was like a big food sale. And uh, then that never happened. It so was a couple hundred dollars. It was a couple of, it was like 250 or something, right? It was like 200. We'll have to go I'm, back and check the minutes. I'm remembering 200, but. $200. Could we, um, we could vote now. Could we switch what we were going to spend that on for some swag or something for the seniors? Does somebody want to make a motion that we I'll do that. vote? That we need a second for the vote? Second. Okay. Second. Um, so I think we have to do this over Zoom. All those in favor of transferring those funds to do a little something for the seniors, type, please type yes into the box or give a thumbs up. I don't expect a lot of no's. Aye. 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 I am here in eyes. Okay. Anybody um, say no? I, I have a suggestion, though. Yes. Yes. I have. I know a principal that's in Atlanta, and what he his school did, they made banners for all the seniors with their pictures on it and it had like class of 2020. Their banners was pretty huge, but you mm. could probably get something to that extent this condensed. Like a banner with all okay. their pictures or something, a little something for everyone? Yeah, each, a lot each, of student, each student got their own personal banner. So oh, when, wow. but it's in Atlanta, so they had like a car parade. So the parents had their banner on the car parade. So of course, <laughs> this is New York, we can't do that. But if we do like a, a eight and a half by 11, just something to that extent on like a photo sheet paper, does it say UA Maker class of 2020, we support you or something. It don't have to be as grand as a big banner on your car. So do we have, maybe it's you, Margaret, or do we have a volunteer to help Drew so it's not all on his shoulders, just kind of do some research and brainstorm a little bit? You guys could be the Class of 2020 committee. I will show, I will find my, uh, my friend's page to show it, and if you need me, I will. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Um, I, we, need, we do need to finish the vote, although I, I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Is there anybody who's voting no? You can type no, and if there's anybody who's abstaining. Okay. All right. So we've got a couple of hundred dollars to do something for the seniors. Thank you for that idea. It was a really great idea. Yeah. All right. Um, we were in the middle of, what were we in the middle of? Oh, were there any other questions for um, Liz before we move on to uh, Ashley, who's going to talk about summer opportunities, and then we will actually, I think, have one more vote um, and do a little bit of PA business before we wrap up. Okay. Well, oh, here's Andy. Hi, Andy. <laughs> um, Ashley. Okay. Ready. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, nobody look at my desktop. <laughs> okay. Can everybody see the career readiness resource? Yes. Okay, so this has really evolved into basically anything and everything I could possibly think of that family students um, may need right now. Um, so I reorganized the document a little bit. So there's a table of contents. You can kind of see what's in the whole document. 
Um, there are now some color coding so you can know exactly what opportunities are new. And I've even gone ahead and if you click on one of these new things, I actually put the date that it was added. So you know that it's new information that you haven't seen. Um, so it does have a little bit of everything and there are just a few things that I do want to talk through. Um, this document can be found, I've emailed it out a couple times. It's also live on our website and every time it's updated, it's automatic. So every time I'm in there adding new things, it'll be, you'll see that on that end. If anyone so, wants to follow along, I just put the link in the chat. Thank you for that, Liz. The first thing I wanna talk about are working papers. A lot of families have been reaching out to me and students about how they can get their working papers. I am hoping that I will have received the materials to actually be able to issue those virtually um, and put them out in the mail for families. So this still requires that the part one of the working application is completed if a student is getting working papers for the first time. Um, this can all be signed virtually. You do not have to print anything out. Um, and then I can view the birth certificate, the social security card, and proof of physical fitness all over uh, video. It can be emailed to me, whatever is the easiest form. I'll really work with um, you all to make sure I get what I need and that way your student can get their working papers. Um, similarly, if your student just needs updated working papers, all I would need to see was a updated um, physical fitness. And then I will simply put the physical card in the mail um, once we do that. Any questions about working papers? Okay. Quick question, actually, why would you need to update the working papers? Um, that is, there are different, um, what is the term? Students are allowed to work different amounts of hours based on how old they are. So 14-year-olds um, and 15-year-olds have one color, and then when you turn 16, you're actually allowed to work longer hours. So that card is a different color, and that's when you would need to reapply. So if your student's going from 15 to 16, they would need to update their working papers. I had a question as well on the proof of physical fitness. Is that like a doctor figured out thing or is that the same as a student would have had to participate in a sport? Um, so anything from a doctor stating that they are physically fit and I can take anything from within the last year. So if a student submitted something to be able to play a sport, is that sufficient or do we have to get something else? It usually can be used. It just, there just has to be certain language. And as long as I see that, like there's no exemptions for anything, um, then it's, it's fine. I can take a sports, a sports physical as well. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to talk about two opportunities where students can actually earn a stipend for their participation. Um, so we have Why Vote, which is an organization looking for youth interested in becoming activists. They can earn $150 for their um, participation. It is on a rolling basis. So if that is something your student might be interested in doing, I'd encourage them to apply soon. Um, there are not very many paid or stipend opportunities right now, so I am anticipating that they will fill up very quickly. The second current opportunity is Knee on Summer, and this is a career readiness program for youth age 14 to 24, and it is open to any student living in these listed communities here and also which is nice for any student who has um who is on probation who has been formerly incarcerated this is also an opportunity for them and they can earn up to twelve hundred dollars over the course of the summer and that is all virtual programming um and they would earn money for their participation Great. any questions about those two opportunities
Ashley, I had seen a question come up about the previous uh, working papers, which is, do you need the physical social security card or just the number? I have to see the physical card. Okay, and then the last thing I did want to talk about, I know this is very early, but I have begun to meet with some of our partners and talk about what some potential programming would look like for the following school year. Um, it still is very, very tentative and up in the air, but I do want to note that there will be more information being entered here for the coming school year, if that is something you and your student are interested in looking into now. Um, and that way we can kind of start the next school year running. Okay. And now I'll just open it up for any general questions at all. Presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Where on the website can that uh, Google Doc be found? I believe it is under the students tab. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's under. It's under, if you go to our website, it's under students and then student opportunities. Okay. And do they, they don't necessarily need working papers to participate in any of those or they must have working papers first? If it is a paid opportunity where they're earning like an hourly rate, then they do need working papers. If the opportunity is stipend based, they do not need working papers. we have until the last day of school to file that is a good question jade um tentatively now i would say yes you have until the last day of school and that's only because i'm the one who issues working papers and we are not sure what's happening over the summer I am on the web website, on the school website, and I don't see it under student. I see college plus career, grade, jump rope, and coming, student paperwork, respect for all, handbook, and student. Would it be the last one? Um, it should be that last one you said. I think now that I'm looking at it, our menu lets you scroll. Um, so the second half of the title is cut off there. I will. Oh, okay. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Dante, look into this and see. I think you did one already. Oh, great. Any other questions for Ashley about these great opportunities for our kids? Just general question, Ashley, if like a student's having trouble navigating all of this or deciding, um, is there any support you can offer? Um, yeah, the student can, or yourself, you can reach out to me uh, via email. I will also um, leave my Google Voice number in the chat and students can reach me there via phone or text as well. Great. Hi, it's Debbie, uh, Marla's mom. I have a quick question. Hi. For the NEON program, is I saw it was location-based. Is it also income-based? Um, no, just location. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thanks, Ashley. She yep. just dropped her contact info into the chat for everyone. Um, and you, you do not work over the summer or you do? Still being decided. 
Okay. As is everything else, right? <laughs> everything's, everything's, it's such a strange year. Everything's up in the air. Okay. Okay. And that's also my email. That's great. When Zooms close, the chats go away. So my suggestion for everybody, if you want to hang on to something, is to sort of cut and paste it now or click on a link now so that it stays in your browser after this, after this goes away. It's just... Fun Zoom facts for everyone. <laughs> well, if there aren't any more questions for Ashley, um, I think because we're, we're coming up on almost an hour here, I think we'll just wrap up with a little bit of quick um, PA business. But, you know, I, I would be thrilled if our school representatives did stay on the line for another 10 minutes, just so uh, in case anybody else had a question. Um, so uh, just a couple of things about how uh, PAs are working. Um, as you know, um, the chancellor, we have to abide by a document called Chancellor's Regulations A660 in order to do everything correctly. And here comes the question that I'm gonna get to that's fantastic. So how will the elections take place? So a waiver was put into A660 that allows PAs to meet and vote on certain things over Zoom because usually it is like expressly forbidden to do virtual meetings only. Um, I attend the President's Council, which is basically um, every high school, the president of every uh, high school parent association in Manhattan gets together once a month and then we sort of learn about what's happening next and share best practices and information to bring back to everybody. So, uh, this is not the only PA or the only school where the uh, ability for parents to engage and the attendance at these has increased significantly because Zoom is easier for a lot of people, although not everybody. So we were all talking about that and that um, information is sort of being sent up the chain to you know the district and, and the superintendent and hopefully we'll get to the chancellor. Uh, because it, we are seeing that more people can come and more people can participate. The issue is that if it's a family that doesn't have access to Zoom or Wi-Fi or a device, then they're completely left out. And we have to be open to everybody. That's why it always has to be at the school because in theory, everybody can get to the school, but not everybody can use Zoom. So my prediction is that maybe at some point in the future, it would be kind of both. Um, but we, it, it's not just us. Every high school is saying, oh my God, we used to have six parents and now 40 parents are coming and everybody's more engaged and people get their questions answered. Like, so um, using Zoom in the future is something that's definitely going to be up for some sort of discussion. In the meantime, um, we had been told that we couldn't conduct votes. What we can do is vote on things like money expenditures or um, you know, voting in the minutes or things like that, which is what we're doing. A, uh, a deadline was extended for PA elections and SLT elections. They now must occur before October 31st. And the reason for that is that it is very difficult to um, conduct a fair vote over Zoom that couldn't be contested by anyone, that has to be open to everybody, including you know parents that maybe don't have access to Zoom. Um, also, when votes are conducted for those positions, uh, then it has to be checked against the roster of like which students are actually in the school so that nobody like crashes the Zoom and vote. I mean, they, they have to take all these things into account even though we may feel like that's kind of unlikely. So um, elections are not going to be held until uh, m probably early October. They just have to happen before October 31st. So in a way, that's actually kind of a great thing because it will allow incoming freshman parents who want to be involved to run for a position uh, in the PA, which I think would be great. Um, what PA, in order to be legal and to function, a PA must have a president, a secretary, and a treasurer. At the moment, our president, our secretary, and our treasurer are parents of underclassmen. So we should all be, you know, Owen and Fanny and I, it's my understanding that the three of us will still be there in September. Andy, who is now on our Zoom, wave hi, Andy, 
<laughs> Andy is our current vice president and our former president and uh, current and former SLT member. And Andy will not be able to be there in September. Um, so we will have all positions you can run for, but we will certainly have an opening for vice president. Um, but those elections will be held in the fall. So we are waiting for a document from FACE. FACE, I believe, stands for Family Act Action and Community Engagement. They've rebranded like three times in 10 years, so I forget what they stand for. But they're the organization that kind of tells us what we can and cannot do and what the chancellor is putting into the into the a660 so they were supposed to deliver last friday a whole step by step of you know how will elections run over zoom if it's still over zoom and things like that but that actually there was a delay and we haven't seen it yet so i don't even have the information on how to run those elections over zoom if they have to be on zoom but whatever they deliver to us over the summer we will follow it because we want to be um on the up and up does that make sense to everybody and did that answer the question about the pa and slt elections so probably in september we will create a nominating committee nominating committee is a, a couple of volunteers from the parents and it's a great job because you are in charge of collecting nominations and making sure the election happens but if you're on the nominating committee it means you can't run for a position so it's a great way to volunteer if you do not want to be on the board <laughs> but you still want to volunteer so we'll probably do that in uh september and then we'll have an election in november i'm seeing a question come through can't we at least provide info on how to connect via various platforms and operating systems? Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, I mean, maybe at least in the meantime, Luke, or through an all-parent all uh, list, could just provide some information that you can access Zoom through your phone, through your this, you know, you don't have to have whatever, you know, you don't have to have Microsoft, you could have um, open source software, you could do whatever, um, but you can still join a meeting just so that people are kind of thinking about how they can join the meetings and not necessarily concerned about whether they have, you know, the most, the most expensive phone or, you know, any, any type of necessary software. Absolutely. I would think that we could do that, you know, as long as it's over Zoom. I think the issue for uh, the chancellor is that there are some families that don't even necessarily have access to that. You right. know, I, I'm a big fan of, hey, let's just do these all on Zoom. Um, so you're, you're kind of preaching to the converted, but, you know, we that's, also have to follow but, the, the legal guidelines. But so. maybe we could even explore, like, do we know, I don't know this, like is Zoom compatible with Android, iPhone, you know, okay, so it still needs a, it still needs a kind of a digital interface, but we can at least kind of explore the, like the universe, yeah, the, the, the widest possible universe that people could get on with. Absolutely, and that's a great idea. And I do know that, um, I know with some Zooms, there's also a dial-in phone that's not, there's no video, but you could just like literally on a landline, if you have one, you could call into the Zoom, um, but you're not able to see anybody. And that includes like any presentations or anything like that. It's literally just a phone call. But yeah, I mean, that, that should, oh, thank you, Ashley. Uh, yeah, we, we would definitely, we, we could send that out. So while I mentioned Andy, um, do you want to sort of introduce yourself? Because we wanted to have an opportunity to, to say goodbye. <laughs> Can we hear you? Oh, I think you're muted. I think your phone is muted if you call yeah, in. Yeah, I think your phone is muted. Oh, well. Well, what, well, what we wanted to do, Andy, um, well, now you're muted, now you're, yeah. No, we're not hearing you, we're only seeing you, but you can wave while we all, thank you for your years of uh, service and dedication to Maker, uh, one of the first families to come in, right? I mean, of the graduating seniors, you guys were here like the second year of the school, all of you who were parents of graduating seniors, which is great. And Andy was PA president, and this year he's our vice president, and he's been on SLT. 
and River is graduating and we just want to say thank you. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, and notes are coming in, so you get to read your thank you notes. Um, I just want to make sure, right, okay, I wanted to talk about the waiver and October 31st. Um, there was one other uh, piece of PA business, which is that when COVID hit, um, Owen, our treasurer, who's still here, right? Yeah, there he is, um, had set up a, a Venmo for the PA bank account and we were collecting donations um, for families in the school who were really hard hit by COVID financially. And, you know, we as PA, we don't necessarily know who the families in need are, but the school does. So what we have to do, and, and you guys were so incredibly generous. I think we raised about $500, right, Owen? Mm, like, we have $725. Wow. Yeah. That's great. That's really amazing. Um, so we have $725 to basically give to um, Luke and Liz and Chad um, to be able to distribute. Now, I don't know how distribution works in the middle of COVID. That's, that's a little tricky, but it would be to help um, families that you guys know could maybe really need uh, use a little bit of, of that money. And that's, that's the pretext under which we raised that money. But we do have to vote to give that money to the school. So um, I, I move that we vote to turn over $725 to the school to distribute to families in need. I need a second to the motion. Somebody second that motion. Second. Please. Second. Thank, Thank you, Christopher. You. All right. And we are going to vote either with our reactions, thumbs up, or in the chat, um, all in favor of turning that money over to the school to deliver to families in need. I'm seeing a lot of yeses because you are all wonderful people. Um, is anybody opposed? And does anybody want to abstain? Affirmative votes. You guys did it. Okay. So what, what Owen, what I think uh, you and Luke or what we need to figure out how to do is how to transfer that money to the school. Yes. Okay. Um. Normally, I would write a check, but right. you're in the school office, and of course, the school is closed. So, right. So um, that, that's why we have to get out. <laughs> um, is transferring that money to the school as simple as simply giving them the login information to the Venmo account? Um, I'm not sure about that. The, I I do know that we're not that we're not supposed to transfer money um, out of Venmo um, as a donation. Mm -hmm. uh, as, the, as, as a way of paying for things because it's not it's not tracked in the same way mm -hmm. uh, so it does yeah, need to come out of the PA account really complicated arcane rules that we can accept money via PayPal or Venmo but when we pay a vendor or pay anybody we can't use PayPal or Venmo to pay somebody it has to be a check except that right now the checks are ev and this is for every pa every pa's checks are locked in the building because they're not allowed to leave the building because they have to live at the school they can't be in like owen's house right so that, that there there's that's why like during this time of waiver something like this like there's an exception for something like this which is why i think if we get creative because you can't they, you know the money can't be held hostage i mean god forbid we don't get back into school until who knows like I hope it's September, but like, who knows? It, it, money can't be held hostage from, from this is parents' money that, that gets fundraised um, over the years. Question. So. Well, I hope oh, we well, can see if we can do like a wire transfer or something. Yeah, I mean, we might be able to do a wire yeah, transfer. Is, is there like an online bill pay from the PA bank account or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm saying like Owen and Luke, I think, since they both are the keeper of the keys of the two accounts, I, I think they can figure it out. And whatever it takes, I think, you know, it'll be okay. Nobody report us to the chancellor. But technically, we're not supposed to pay anything unless it's a check. But and it's impossible for any PA in New York City to pay for anything right now, because all the checkbooks are locked in the closed buildings. So um, yeah, it's a strange time, everyone. But thank you for voting for that. Thank you for donating because that's really, yeah, that, our lips are sealed. We love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> there are some schools that, that are so contentious and this school is so wonderful. All the parents are amazing. Um, uh, I just lost my train of thought, which means that the, I think the meeting is coming to an end. 
But, um, oh, I wanted to thank you for everybody who was involved in donating because I know that this is a really hard time to give money because we all don't know what's going on with our own money, but we all chipped in and, and you know, that's, that's nearly a thousand bucks that, that everybody came up with on short notice. And that's really amazing. So thank you. Um, that was it for PA business. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, I am, as is everybody on this zoom, I think we're all praying that this ends for September and that everybody can be back in the building. Just in case we're not yet, um, we're starting to get information on how to do things like conducting potential Zoom fundraisers in case the next several um, PA meetings and, and the first couple of months of school are still remote. I mean, God, I really hope they're not, but maybe they are. So um, I'm getting some information on that from other PAs that are all in the same boat because we're all in the same boat, but we still do have to fundraise for our schools. You know, Luke's going to have a budget and there are going to be things, there's going to be a tremendous shortfall uh, with the, the city budget uh, because of COVID and, you know, education often gets cut and there are going to be things that we all want for our kids in the school that maybe the school doesn't have the money for and we're going to want to raise the money for it. So um, we're starting to think about, you know, potential Zoom fundraiser ideas and, and more to come on that. And hopefully we won't need it to be on Zoom. So with that, does anybody have um, any questions or comments or thoughts or anything? Evie, yeah. I, ha I have a question. So yes. with Title I funds that we have, about $1,200, does that carry over or do we start again? I don't know how... Title I works. I think that there is something very specific that we have to spend it on parent, something for parent engagement. Right. And it has to go during the school year and it okay. can only really come from the certain um, catalog. And then, you know, everything's at the school, right? So totally. it, it, couldn't, it couldn't be spent because everything's at, all that information is at the school. Am I right, Liz? Yeah, we've actually similarly have been asking that question to our budget office. Um, yeah. And we're, we're still waiting on a response and guidance on whether those funds will roll over um, or if there are, you know, there are definitely things that we could be using that funding for now. Um, but right now, purchasing is all just kind of frozen right now. So we're just waiting guidance. But as soon as we hear anything, we will yeah. definitely let you all know. Yeah, I'd like to hear that we can roll it over to next year, but I'm not holding out much hope on that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and and that would be true for every Title One school. It's not just us, because usually voting and purchasing and deciding on that happens at the end of April, and there like there was no end of April. <laughs> so, you know what you guys know what I mean? Like it, it everything just yeah. But that was a great question. Anything else? Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for coming and paying attention and, and voting. Um, Andy, that Andy wrote something really nice in the chat. Thank you, Andy. And good luck to you. And good luck to River, who's going to college on the West Coast, right? Okay. Um, every parent of a senior who is on this Zoom, you guys are amazing. Your kids are amazing. You're so resilient. I mean, it, you know, it's always exciting to be a senior, but this was such a strange year and they, they didn't get so many things that they worked so hard for and that they really deserved and just let them know that we send our love to them and we send our love to you because it's been tough on you guys too. And just, just thank you. And to any uh, parents of underclassmen, we still love you and we'll be excited to see you in uh, September and hopefully next year will be a better year. And to any parents of incoming freshmen, thank you for joining us. We're, we're happy to see you and we will definitely see you in September when we will start to talk about elections. And if nobody has any other uh, business or questions or thoughts, we will call this to a close. And this is the last one of the school year. So we will have, um, we'll let everybody know when the next one is, but it's going to be in September. All right. Well, just so you all know, we will um, try to the next few weeks still do our like more informal, just weekly parent nights. Oh yeah, please. Cause I love those actually. <laughs> so we're going to continue those through the rest of the month. Um, and hopefully I'll have some more guest speakers as well.
So hope to see you all there. Thanks. Jesse, good to know what happened last week because I tried to get on and I was wondering if I had the wrong Zoom link or something. So cool. Yeah, I think there wasn't one last week because it was only for incoming freshman families. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Double book. Double book. Yeah, there's only one Zoom. Thank you. I see there's lots of thank yous in here. There's no PA board without the P. There's, if, if parents don't come, we can't do anything. So it's really all you guys. Thanks, Venus. Okay. All right. Bye. Have a great summer. Bye, y'all. Okay.